Working Masterclass in the kitchen, not the workshop again. Recently I posted a video of this sausage stuffing station that I made over three parts. Now I'd like to do a review of the components or the, the pieces of machinery that I'm using to actually make the sausages. They're from Viva and yes, they did send them to me and this is the review that I promised I'd do for them. So. Let's get on with the review. First of all, we'll start with the grinder. There's this chap here. And as you can see, it fits nicely onto the end of the bench. Let's pull that off. It's got these soft rubber stoppers here so it doesn't mark the bench. And there is also a soft rubber ring that goes over here, which I've misplaced at the moment but it's all solid stainless steel. The handle is really great. A lot of the handles I've seen and you have to screw them in. This is sort of got like a, a half cam lock. It goes on and then it's locked in. Very easy to take off and adjust. It's all really nicely polished stainless steel. No cast iron or aluminium. And to pull it apart, Simply take the nut off the front, coarse grinding plate, grinding knife, and they give you a finer grinding plate as well. And the auger is so well machined. Uh, we've got one that's a cast iron one we've had for about 15 years, and the cast iron casting for the auger is pretty rough, whereas this really nicely machined. And as you can see in the video that I'll show you when I'm making sausages, this is so easy to clean. It's got a generous mouth on it there, nice and shiny, easy to clean, got a nylon bearing at the back for the auger to, to run on. Uh, not much to it really. So really, really easy to put together. Make sure that the bush is clear at the back. The auger goes in there. There's a square drive on the front that the knives go onto. Make sure, whoops, the knife is facing forward. And what I do is I've got a, a diamond plate or if you've got an oil stone or a wet stone, whenever you're finished, clean everything up and then just give it a nice little delicate lap and you'll find that'll really keep it really bright, serviceable and sharp, ready to use. There's nothing worse than if you're trying to make some mince and that cutter blade isn't uh, sharp. It, the, the meat just binds, it catches, and it's not a nice experience, but I thoroughly enjoyed using this. So it's got a little locating lug underneath here. The grinding plate sits on, and that protrudes a little bit, and then get the cap nut. Spin that on and you're ready to go. I, as I said, it does have a plastic uh, ring cover here, but I've done away with it because this is just going to sit on the table the whole time. And you just tighten it up. We have done this on the dining room table and it works really well. It gives you a good 40 mil of a clamp distance. So it'll fit on almost anything. The handle goes on this way, locks in, and as you turn, it stays locked. To disengage, a little bit the opposite way, and it'll come off. Very easy to clean. Uh, I haven't put it in the dishwasher, but I'm pretty sure you could if you wanted to. And then the finer grind, just replacing that grinding plate is as easy as taking that one off, putting that one on, 
putting the retaining bolt in place and you're good to go. So 10 points up for that. It is really, really beautiful. There's a link down below if you're interested and there's a discount for um, a short while if you're interested. And look, it, it comes in under 100 or around 100 Australian dollars. And for my um, money, I think it's the best one on the market. It's so easy to clean. And as I said, with not having any casting on it, stainless steel, just wash it, dry it, put it away or put it back on, whatever you're going to use it. And on the grinder also, there is a sausage stuffing funnel. And then pick whatever sausage skin size will fit that. Um, I think it's around a 30. And then put your plate on. That goes over there. Still up that retaining nut. That'll hold it really nice and firm. Put your sausage skin on and it's a two-man operation. If you can get a push stick, it would be nice because then you can push down, you haven't got your fingers going in the way of the auger. And then as you turn the handle, the sausage will fill and come out. But I got the sausage stuffer. So let's move on to the sausage stuffer. Let me just put this one back to what it was. So the sausage stuffer, you get five different size horns or tubes. The ones we use are a number 30 and a number 23, I think it is. So fat sausage, thin sausage, that's the 30, that's the 23. Really, really easy to put together. In fact, from memory, it came fitted together. So to clean it, pull the lever out or undo the top. The bucket comes out, that then you can clean and wash, or you can put your sausage meat in it, and then it fits into these lugs here at the back, like so, and clips up there. And then the plunger itself, I'll actually take it off so you can see it. The plunger itself, has got a nylon O-ring or seal around it, and they give you two extra seals. So if this one breaks, you've got spare ones. So we'll just put this back on. Oh, one, one important thing. When you're washing this, when you've make, made sausages, be sure to undo this screw here. There's a little spring underneath it, and there's a pressure valve. What that does is when you're squeezing your sausage meat down and there's air in there, it allows the air to escape. So when you actually start filling the casings, you don't get air pockets, which is pretty important. So I'll just put this on. You can see how easy it goes on. Okay, we'll put that up. Now, you'll notice there's two splines here. The top spline is for speed, and that's when you either want to extract the plunger from the cylinder, or you want to get it down onto the meat as quick as possible. And that will go down if you turn it anti-clockwise, see how quickly that goes down, or you want to raise it. The one next to it, is for actually stuffing the sausages. And it's a different gear ratio. And if you see how slowly that goes down, that will give you the rate of feed that the bulk is coming out and going into your casings. We find it's quite a nice gentle speed to go. And you put your hand just on the casing itself. And from my own experience, I've found that it fills the sausages just about right. It's not too empty and it's not too full. So as you go, this goes down, squeezes the meat, the meat comes out here along this funnel into the casing. All in all, really, really well made. As I said in the 
uh, bench videos when I was making this, this will sit quite nicely on the tabletop. It's only because I've made this bench specially that I decided to put a couple of knurled knobs on there. So it's a fixture and you know, if we're moving around, we won't knock it over. But if you just want it on the kitchen table or the uh, kitchen bench top, it's absolutely fine. And it's fairly, fairly uh, sturdy and steady. I didn't have any problems with it moving before I made this. That's about it, I think. Um, just be mindful that whenever you've used it, it looks nice finish on it. it hasn't got any really horrible sharp edges. Um, again, food grade stainless steel. And for the price, I, I thought they'd be far dearer than this. Uh, again, downstairs, there's a link for a coupon, uh, which will give you 5% off, I think. And if it's something you'd like to get into, making sausages or even making your own mince. Susie bought me some sausages the other day that would have been in the fridge and she said, what do you think of those? And Oh, they, they were horrible. I won't tell you where I got them from, but oh. And then I felt the sausages that we'd made and it worked out pretty close, a little bit dearer, but the big thing is I know what's in them. And speaking about I know what's in them, Let's actually make some sausages and I'll show you, it was the outtake of the video when I finished this uh, sausage stuffing bench and we actually made sausages. So I hope you enjoy the whole process. Oh, it's nearly the whole process, but you'll see just how fabulously these bits of kit work. So thank you once again, Viva. Um, I, I'm honestly impressed. I really am. I'm blown away. And there's not one person in the family. We've got five living at home that have not liked the sausages. And there's so many things you can do with them. So anyway, let's make some sausages. I'll catch you all later on. Bye. What we've been told and what we've discovered, we, we've had a couple of goes at making sausages. Um, and some, yeah, we've eaten them all, but some were better than others. But what we've been told and what we've discovered is you've got to get your meat out of the fridge. So it has to be cold, especially when you're grinding it and when you're packing the sausages. So this, I've just got out of the fridge. It was cryovac packed. Get rid of all the extra juice I don't want. This is um, chuck steak. Quite a nice looking piece. Nice lot of fat in it. And I'm just gonna cut this up into the size that'll fit nicely into the grinder. So just chunks, whatever you reckon is a fair thing. And here we go, we'll stick it on the sausage stuffing station. Got a glass bowl there to catch it. And in we go. This is so easy to use. It is an absolute joy. And just, <laughs> I've just discovered something. These wheels, I've got the brakes on, but we've got highly polished uh, tiles and it's moving on the tiles. So might have to buy a little rubber mat or something rather to sit it on, I think. Isn't that lovely looking mints coming out there? And it's not taking too much effort. I'm doing a coarse grind at the moment. And then what we do after that is we cut up whatever we want to put in it, um, parsley or garlic or whatever. And then I'll put it through a finer mincer. And the trick is don't um, mince it too quickly because what I found out, believe it or not, you can cook the meat. When it comes out, it's starting to go gray, which is just starting to cook. And that's the heat being generated by the blade against the um, grater, I suppose. Okay, we're nearly there. This is about a kilo. That's enough to make about 20 sausages for us. Now a trick we learnt is you still got meat in there and sometimes it's hard to get it all out. So, a 
couple of slices of bread. Might take one, might take two. But then what you do is you fold the bread in four and poke it in there. And that will do several things. It sucks up any juices that are there. If you've got any meat that's being stuck on the auger itself, the bread will actually move it along. And we're still pushing meat out. That's two slices of bread. Here's the third slice. And that's going all the way through. And I can now see bits of bread actually coming out with the meat, which is fine because that's a good filler. You can see all that white, that's all just bread. If you don't want that in your sausage, if you're like us, you've got chickens, <laughs> give it to the chickens, they'll love it. Okay, now that's finished coming through. You have a look how clean this auger is when I take it out. That's your grater. And that's the auger. All I've got left on there is a bit of bread and that's all nice and clean. So what I'm going to do now, just chuck up some parsley, reasonably fine, I think this is pretty close to the end of its freshness, but for what we want it's fine. Um, you can develop your own recipes, I'm not going to tell you exactly what we put in ours because I don't know half the time. Chuck's going to have that to put that in there. Get an onion. I won't give that to the chooks because chooks don't like onion. And then I'll just cut this up into to quarters or thereabouts. Oh, I might do it in six, there you go. Okay. And the blades, when they, when they come, they're pretty darn sharp, but I found if they do need to brighten up, uh, if you've got a, a sharpening stone, or in this case, got a little diamond stone, just give it a couple of circular movements like that. Uh, an ordinary aluminium oxide stone would be fine, but if you're going to use kerosene or something, remember to wash it afterwards, and that brightens them up no end. Give it a rinse. Okay. Now the auger's all nice and clean. Pop that back in. Put the handle on. The handle fits really, really well too. Better than some of the older versions. And it's got a little locating lug here, but when you actually get one and playing with it, you'll see how it all fits together. And that goes on there. So now what I want to do with this coarse grind is put it through again and we'll get to find the grind. Get another tray. 
put it under there, and away we go. Sometimes it helps to put it into a little bit of a ball so it'll go into the grinder easier. But you'll find, not that it's hard to do the first grind, but the, the secondary grind you're doing is so easy. Here it comes. Gonna have <laughs> it was a great idea putting the casters on. Too bad they don't work. See how it's coming out? Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? Now I'm going to put a bit of onion in there. A bit more meat. Something lovely about doing this, you, well, apart from the fact you know what's in your sausages. Now, you can see actually that's come out a bit grey. That's because the um, onion has reacted a little bit with the meat. But it really doesn't make any difference. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll do whilst I'm thinking about it all. Put a couple of shots of garlic in there as well. Just to make it interesting. Oh, that smells nice. Tell you what, just quietly, I've got some cuts on my finger and that garlic is stinging like you wouldn't believe. Okay, that's it. Great little garlic crusher, that one. So the coarse grind is what I would have if I'm making lasagna or rissoles or um, spag bowl, something like that. And then this finer grind is for sausages. And we, we had some the other day. Oh my goodness, it was nice. And Susie ended up putting it into a square pan. And then we cut slices off and fry them um, as if it was, uh, you know, a rissole or something. Ah! Oh, if you make it the right size for a piece of bread, Excellent, Amondo. Okay. Now you can, if you want, you can put bread through there. As you can see, that's still grinding quite well. I haven't got much meat in there at all. So I think if I put one slice of bread in there, that will clean it out. I just pop that in there and turn that and you'll see the bread coming out very shortly. It'll push the rest of that meat out and then it'll change colour to white. Here it comes. There we go. Now I'm going to leave that bread in there. Keep going until nothing else is coming out. And once again, you've got quite a nice, just move this, quite a nice clean auger. And you can see that bread's all bunched up. And I'm telling you, the chooks are going to absolutely love it and they'll give us good eggs. So that's that size of the process. I'm not going to show you how we mix it all together, but I will show you how the sausage stuff all works now because we've got a mix that we made the other day. And it too is in the fridge. I've got my <laughs> sausage stuffing partner with me. Now, here's, a, here's a fun little thing. I made this out of... Whoops. 
out of an old <laughs> microwave. Picked it up um, from the dump shop for five dollars. Threw the microwave away, kept that, kept the race, and then just turned a little table underneath it. And you'll see it works good when the sausage comes out, we can make the sausage round. First of all, we've got to put the sausage skins on. And they fit quite nicely over here. There's um, various size tubes for whatever sausages you're planning on making. This one I'm using here is 30, and it makes a nice fat sausage. This just releases backwards like that. Or oh, can you hold the... It's really good if you can have two people because when I pull this back, this falls down. But what I'm going to do now is get the sausage mix. This is after it's been mixed and had stuff added to it. So now it goes straight into here. Normally I just tilt it back and throw it in, but seeing you watching, We'll do it this way. And when you get it in, throw it in so it hits the bottom nice and hard. And I've got a, that smells all right, doesn't it? And again, this has just come out of the fridge. So it's nice and cool. Okay, so there it is, down there. We'll just put it in here. And now we're feeding the meat through, and here it comes. Just about there. So I'm just gonna tie a knot in the end of the sausage skin. Like that. Now if you get an air bubble like that, just give it a little prick. That's all right. It'll be okay. And here we go. Okay. How easy is that? You can see those lovely bits of parsley in there. You don't want it too full because you want to be able to twist it. So just very slight pressure on it. And that will about do that one. Tie the end off. And that's one round sausage, which I'll twist and make into smaller sausages very shortly. Well, that's it. That's how easy it is to make sausages. And I tell you what, I can't recommend it highly enough. The Viva Sausage Stuffer and the Sausage Grinder. Check below, there's a coupon for a limited time to save a couple of dollars, but you will not believe how much fun you can have and how the taste of sausages will uh, change. I think Sue and I, we've had, what, seven or eight attempts. And by about the seventh one, we got a sausage that we're really, really happy with. So um, until we meet again, this is Steve signing off, not pulling the shed door down, but metaphorically, and saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, 
Keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in one of the workshops very, very soon. Till then, happy stuffing. Catch you later. Bye for now.